You're listening to a Rare Drop podcast. Check us out at raredrop.co. is freshly roasted and ethically sourced it's music to your ears shake up the way you wake up the king's coast coffee.com Claims, she claims that's all she wants from me. However, there is a mountain, a mountain, mountain of uh, closet. What do you call it? Organizational system. Oh, you have to build a closet organizer. Yes. Ah, see, they have professionals that'll do that for you. Welcome well, to episode forty-five. Hold on, they stand have professionals. By. Guess, guess who it's from? Who? If you could describe one place as Swedish hell. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, did you see there's a new game about Ikea and they're suing them? There's a game for Ikea. That's so how bad a, it is. Well, there's a game where you go, you have to spend the night in Ikea and all the employees and stuff are like possessed. It's like a survival game. So you That's start building awesome. these structures and each night you survive, like they get stronger the next night. Um, uh, it's crazy if you go look at the trailer, but Ikea is suing them because they're the, they use like blue and yellow and the likeness and it's not called Ikea in the game, but apparently they're suing the developer. Uh, oh, over. come on. That's hilarious. Putting Kia furniture, to, Ikea furniture together is an absolute nightmare. It should that be, should be right. Like furniture simulator. Yes. That's where I thought you were going to go with it. Yeah, no, no, this is just, uh ikea the, the game no it's it's a survival horror game if you will speaking of horror uh actually before we speak about horror not horror kingscoastcoffee.com i hope you got some of that mango honey um because it's gone uh num, num, as num, predicted num, 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 num. but the holidays are right around the corner which means holiday stuff is is here it's november 1st as we're recording this you will hear this obviously later this week uh but get on that kingscoastcoffee.train make sure you are are signed up For the mailing list, you're part of the King's Club. You'll get access to the products before everyone else um, as they release. And during the holidays, as you know, we release a lot of stuff. So like cocoa that everybody freaks out over. I'm in love out of the cocoa. cocoa. I will say this because of supply chain. We have less cocoa than we've had in three years. You better get ahead of it. Just get ahead of it now. Just saying. Just just prepare yourself for that. So. Anywho, kingscoastcoffee.com. Holidays are coming, so get ready. It makes a great gift, and it's cheap, and people will love you forever, and then they'll buy coffee from us on their own. So you give a good gift. We get a new customer. Everybody wins. Unless you're one of those procrastinating people, and you wait too long, and you miss out. There you go. Just saying. Horror. Halloween is over. Thank God. I love Halloween. Fucking hate Halloween. I am. I Uh, mean, I'm not. So I'm not one of those people. Well, no, a, you're not what I described in the chat the other day. Correct. No, you're not one of those people. No. But I do thoroughly enjoy Halloween. I'll even say even Rob. Also, Rob didn't listen to last week's episode because he hasn't complained to us yet. Even uh, <laughs> even Rob isn't isn't like the bad Halloween person. I am talking about the people. So in, in our chat, I said I don't like Halloween and it's the people that ruin Halloween for me because there are people that wrap their entire identity up in, in Halloween. And that's all they Like, it's like, ah, my day is here, month, whatever. Um, They are the same people who complain about Christmas, which is my favorite holiday. And then on top of it, they're the same people who complain that Christmas decorations are out in the month of October, yet they say nothing when Halloween decorations are out in August. I will say this. I will say this. Uh, Not that I was a Grinch. But there was a moment, there was a point in time 
where I was like, oh, Christmas is too, too early for this, too early for this, right? But then when yeah. Christmas season would be upon us, it felt like two weeks. And I'm like, oh, that really came and went. That sucked. And right. I, didn't like, I didn't like that it felt like it was two minutes. So I a couple of years ago, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to embrace early Christmas. As yeah, soon dude. as November hits, like Thanksgiving is part of Christmas. That's part am, of. So, I mean, it's I, food, not, food Christmas is food what Christmas, I call it. There you go. So not that our tree is up November 1st, but. Probably no. within the next couple weeks, our tree will be up. I and the whole conversation started because I took a picture of my in laws had their tree up on Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember when I was at their house, <laughs> and I sent it to the our little group chat. And you know, Pete was screenshotting the weather in Tampa and all that stuff. And I was like, I kind of like it; it's relaxing. And then Rob was like, You get oh, to enjoy word. the season that much God. more. I feel like the funny part about that conversation is the fact that Rob puts his tree up before I do every single year. Gets ridiculed for it, and then he's ridiculing someone else for putting their tree up. Rob I guess it's because it's before Halloween. Rob so. is a PSL lover before it's even below 60. Oh, my God. He's he getting <laughs> PSLs in August. Please. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's getting PSLs, and his, his best friends own a coffee company. Let's keep that in mind, too. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Freaking ug-wearing whatever. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but, yeah. So, uh, uh. Halloween's over, but um. so what I did yesterday was in my neighborhood, you either leave a bowl of candy on your stoop so no one rings the bell. Yeah, because people have correct. dogs and kids. That's correct. Or you sit out in your driveway and engage with the neighbors as they come by. So yeah, we did half standard. and half yesterday. Yeah. So um, I put the table up. I, got, I left work a little early. I put the table up. I got over there. I put the candy out. We put some pumpkins. The kids made some signs. Um, and then I put a. a bucket of beer and hard seltzer out because my wife was like you can't put open containers that's Halloween. weird people don't know us for adults blah yeah. blah blah and but i wanted to make mar a picture of margarita and like be like this is homemade here you go fresh lime juice no mix ha ha look at look okay. at me okay okay she wouldn't let me she was like no they might get weird anyway so at first no one was accepting then two women took two of the seltzers I had, and they were like, thank you so much for doing this. I was like, yeah, Halloween's for everybody. Enjoy. Happy Halloween. Mm -hmm. you know. And then my wife's yelling at me. And this is me trying to get in the spirit of Halloween. Then she's yelling at me because I'm telling the kids, don't take one candy. Take a scoop. Get take your hand all. in there. Yeah, because I don't want it. any left over. I don't want it yes. in my house. Yes. She's like, the candy's going to be gone. I'm like, no, it's not. Let the kids take a scoop. So, you know, the kids would come up and I'd be like, I have one rule. They look at me like rule. What the heck is this guy talking about? I was like, you need to take a scoop, not one candy. Yeah. We also had some like toys out, too, that they could take. They hear rule uh, and they think this this is a real motherfucker giving out pennies and toothpaste. No, Just like I, I was a hit with the kids because all the kids were like, shit, this must be one of the rich houses. Keep in mind, Mike, you've been in my house. I live on one of the smallest houses on the block. Do I not? A super nice house, though. But beautiful house. I love my house, but it's one of the smallest houses on the block. I, we, we you had never been to my the townhouse I was in, but we were in the town. No, I've seen pictures. Yeah, we were in the townhouse and uh, the probably one of the first or second years we were there. We, it was just me and my wife. I think Grayson was maybe maybe an infant like, you know, so we, we when we bought candy, we bought boxes, but of the regular size fucking candies, candy bars. Yeah. I got the part of my Cause story like, revolves cause like whatever. And they said the same thing. Oh, we're coming here next year. This is a rich house. I'm like, motherfucker, this is a townhouse. The fuck are you talking about, kid? So <laughs> all of a sudden, the kids are taking handfuls and then the parents start coming by. Like, are you the one with the drinks? I'm like, yeah, here you go. Oh, I got two shit. cases of beer and a case of hard seltzer. Have fun. Shit. OK, so I, I got rid of an entire case of hard of high noon. Um, and I probably gave out half a case of beer between the two cases. Um, and uh my neighbors were so like, oh, my gosh, thank you. So yeah. then my wife starts walking the kids around while I'm still sitting there. Hunter would stay because he likes giving out candy. Mm -hmm. um, and he liked that people were saying because he was dressed as Ash Ketchum. Mm. And uh, he That's loved cool. that people were like, hey, Ash, hey, Ash, hey, Ash. So he was really having fun with that. Um, and then, uh, and, oh, I said, and, and Mike knows my daughter, so he'll laugh at this. I was like, why don't you? Because she was Rapunzel. So I was like, give her a frying pan. And, she, yeah, and my yes, wife's like, yes. my wife goes, I am not letting her walk around this, this town, this village, this little area we live in with a frying pan. That that's is that's incredible, dude. You should have. And I was like, you're probably right. She will probably cause property damage somewhere. Worth it. Um, Worth so it. 
And she's walking him around, like taking him. I'm sitting at the table. I got music going. I'm playing all, you know, like Thriller and, and Ghostbusters and all that stuff. She comes back. She's like, Kevin, don't be upset. But the lady around the block is ripping shots with people. I'm like, no. I'm shown up. She goes, but you're winning with the kids. I go, why? She goes, she has full size candy bars. But when the kids go reach in, she goes, only take one. I'm oh, like, ah, uh, uh, strike. I was like, so I have the total package because I'm making the kids happy because they're like, do. And then the parents can have a drink on their way out. And I'm like, uh -huh. all right. I was like, I'm doing I'm doing margaritas and stuff next year, Danielle. You can't stop me. She's like, OK, she's doing the shots. So I'm like, I'm doing margaritas. You Don't can't stop, stop me. me. Don't stop me. So um, and then we walked the kids around. Hunter got a blister. Juliet was whining. It was like I was like, I Aww. need to go home. These kids are driving me nuts. So um, it, it rained here. Oh, no. It rained. it rained. Yeah. Ask me if I walked around in the rain. Did you walk around? In yes. The rain? As Luigi. Good. Good. Yeah. Was he Mario? He was Bowser. Oh, yeah. There was this the, dude. What was the baby? Peach. Oh, Juliet would die. You got to send her a picture. Yeah, she was Peach. Um, so how many quick question? How many Harry Potters did you see yesterday? None. I saw six. None. How you many? Fam how Go many ahead. family Madrigals did you see yesterday? None. From Encanto? None. I saw three full families dressed as the family Madrigal. None. I saw a bunch of creepy, like, zombie jesters. No zombies. A lot of zombie jesters. Um, Two Pennywise, though. You would have been happy. Hell yeah. I don't know why. The Mario-Luigi combo was popular this year around here. There was uh, one family that was Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, and Toad. Mm. That's what I told Allie. I said... The Elena should have been Toad. You should have been Peach. Yep. I should have been Mario, Grace, and Bowser. But there was no. If Audrey I, I ever spends Halloween with us, because she does her own thing, um, I keep saying I want to do Incredibles. Hell yes. We'd I didn't perfect. see. Other than that. Uh... No, I mean, there's a bunch of classics, man. A bunch of little witches running around. We had a, we had a family that was... Um... Uh, the two stars from Jurassic Park one, that's Dr. Awesome. Grant, and I forget her name. And then all of their kids were dinosaurs. That's awesome. And the one kid had a had a huge blow up Triceratops suit that he could barely walk in, but he was committed, <laughs> committed to the point where he was trying to get candy and he couldn't through the claw. So I'm like, uh, dude, hold your bag open. And I went like this with both hands and just dropped as much as I could in there. So like, you deserve more, but take that. We did have one guy, he was wearing some clown mask. And that's basically, it was regular clothes beyond that. But he was wearing a clown mask, and he had a chainsaw. Mm. That he took the uh, yeah, rain, real one. Operating? Real oh, one. Okay. He took the chain off, obviously. But he's like creeping around cars, coming out with kids, just... <laughs> Love it. We had one kid, he was in like full um like he looked like a division agent and i said because he had a watch on and it was like a, a i thought it might be like the division watch and i said are you a division agent he goes no i'm from the game stalker and i was like that's niche okay he's like yeah there's a new mod out you should play it it's free go to mod db da, da, da. Well, I was I'm, like, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm good dude i'm good kid bye i was like i got wow and i got i owe tim and mike modern warfare time so hell um, yeah Timmy, I love you. So anyway, I, we completely digressed. You were out in the rain with with boy. Oh, yeah. No, we were out in the rain. There was this guy with a clown running around chainsaw in the rain at night. What, what ruined it? I mean, you probably it doesn't get really cold by you. But here, what we typically do is you have the bonfire in the driveway. Mm -hmm. Right. Everyone, all the adults congregate. The moms typically will walk the kids like around the blocks area mm -hmm. and then the dads we stay there and we'll scare the kids or give out candy while we're here and then we all congregate back and usually you know drinks and food right outside and it's just like an out we're all out in the driveway but with the rain we couldn't do anything last night no fire pit no nothing so we had meatball subs inside all right i can get behind that we yeah, uh yeah, no, we, we, we don't do fire pits in the uh, in the driveway for obvious reasons here. Um, That's a shame. It's a little, 
gets a little 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 warm. Yeah. Um yeah. I was in shorts and a t-shirt and I was sweating, so <laughs> for context. Um, Not here. No, no, no. Uh but yeah, it was uh kids had fun. They were melting down towards the end, so ran home and then uh <clears throat> I just sat on the couch and did nothing. Literally, my wife was just on TikTok and Instagram, and I just sat next to her and did absolutely nothing for probably 45 minutes. That's that's the way to go. I unfortunately um, I was working like nights the day before, so I was 2 p.m. I was awake 2 p.m. the day prior. All day, all night, then all day awake until Halloween. We did Halloween, came home and crashed, Mm. crashed. Feel that. Yeah, I was like, I'm. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to the gym. I'm not. I'm doing nothing today. That's why I am still in sweatpants. I feel it, dude. I feel it. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not. Well, apparently, I have to put doors on the. I have to hang doors. That's that's my responsibility today, which I will have still seen, do in sweatpants. Have you seen the Mariah Carey video floating around? No. What's it? What is it? It says like October 31st, and she's on a Peloton, like dressed as a witch in all leather. <laughs> Yeah, and no, then I did. I did. Yes. The calendar flips and she's like ready for Christmas. I saw another one that said, like, be careful, Halloween fans. Mariah Carey is currently thawing out as we speak. Here it comes. So. Yeah, Mariah Carey is, is here. It's November 1st. So, uh, yup, yup. Um, but uh, yeah, so Halloween was uh, was pretty good for the, the kiddos. They had a good time and that's all that matters. That is all that matters. I did watch, um, what did I watch for Halloween? We watched Werewolf at Night, the Marvel one. Uh, dude, how good was that? It was how great. Good? It was a great way to introduce Emma Bloodstone to MCU because she's going to be a pivotal character moving it forward. Was, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the effort that was put into making it look like a classic so good like a classic horror movie you know what i mean at first i was like did they film this on eight millimeter but then no because the sound is so clear right um and yeah you could do sound manipulation but i think what they did was they filmed it on regular digital and then they just ran it through filters to make it look like old school mm. um you know film and whatnot so it looked really good it looked fantastic I, it was w- one of the best period pieces and then everything coming like around to look or look like a period piece, I should say. And then everything coming around a color at the end, but it was great. way to introduce Emma Bloodstone. Uh, what was the monster's name? That guy was Ted. Yeah. Yes. Ted was great. Ted yes. was great. I don't know if Ted is like Marvel character, probably somewhere buried in there. He reminded me of swamp thing, but that's DC. Um, but Ted was, Ted was my favorite part. Um, so we watched werewolf at night and then we watched, um, Midnight Mass. How did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was not what I expected at all. What did you expect at all? I expected like some sort of thriller horror. Did you see it? Can nope. I? No, you can oh, spoil okay, it. Then I, you sure? Yeah, because it's a pretty big spoiler if you're ever going to watch it. Nah, I, so it's, it's it's fine. Okay, spoilers. It's uh, it's a it's a vampire show, and I did not know that going in. Um, now I'm even more excited. So it mixes the line between, you know, the best way I can put it is this is kind of it's it's centered around a small, sleepy village in the Pacific Northwest. It's a fishing village on an island, so it's off the coast. Um, And, you know, there's a Catholic church on the island and the priest um, goes missing and there's all this stuff. But essentially, like the vampire is conflated as an angel of god okay. following me yeah because he brings life with his blood and feeding on people and okay you know so like it's it's the reward of god like giving them these vampiric powers <laughs> yep and so it's kind of like that so it messes with it and they you know it's just fun it was fun it was a great way to like twist and move and there was a lot of surprises in the show that i didn't see coming um but it was it's a good show. Rahul Kohli's in it. Uh, he's a big nerd. Um, he's who everyone wanted as, uh, to play Ezra Bridger in Star Wars when he came to live action. But uh, he plays the sheriff um, and he does a great job. So that was great. Um, those are the only Halloween things. I skipped Twilight Zone this year. I just wasn't wasn't feeling going through it because it's a lot to watch all five seasons of Twilight Zone in like a month. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
So I skipped it. And then I was going to do the episode with Mike where we like go through the best Twilight Zone, but I was like, I didn't watch it this year, so probably just not going to do it. It'd be tough. Um, and then, I enjoyed it. Yeah, though. and then on, on Worst Radio Show, we did the uh, the horror movie rankings, so we did that, so I didn't want to do that again. So um, that's what we did, and now I'm watching um, back to uh, Moon Knight. Nice. I'm like halfway through Moon Knight. Moon Knight's great. Did you watch Moon Knight? I haven't. Oscar Isaac absolutely slays it, so... We, I gotta watch Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk. I gotta watch Love and Thunder. And now Wakanda Forever comes out, I believe, next week. I watched Love and Thunder. Uh, actually, I think I was talking about that in, in our chat. Um, we need to get back on our show schedule. Watching shows? Well, now Halloween's over. It should be easier. Um, yeah, I started watching Rome on HBO when I work out. Rome? Yeah, it's an older show. It's from like 2005. Yeah, a lot of the actors are in Game of Thrones, which I found amusing. Um, really? Yeah, because it's before Game of Thrones, like six years before. OK, um, but it's good. It's a good show. It's about Julius Caesar and, and, and a whole bunch of stuff. So I started watching that. But that's a workout show because my other workout show is Flight Attendant. On HBO. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you were saying. Yeah, which highly recommend. Um, so did that. And then uh, still playing Gotham Knights. The game gets better and better as you unlock more stuff. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay. So if you feel like you're stuck at the beginning or you're not having as much fun or you're listening to streamers that played it for four hours and then put it down, the more you unlock in that game, the better it gets. And if you are a Batman fan, it's even better. Um, there's so many good Easter eggs and little things you can enjoy um, uh, playing that. I have yet to pick up Modern Warfare, but we're going to talk about that in a little while. Oh, little, uh, damn. I think like um, two days after it came out, I was third ranked 30. I haven't played it since only because what i everything i just described but i'll probably be on it yep. today start start uh, ranking up some more um guns i will say this so they they do you know anything about the new ranking system the guns i know nothing that is, the gun leveling system okay so previous so like mw19 yep to get your weapon attachments you had to level every single gun even if guns shit Say like even if weapon platforms shared attachments, they were the same across the board for other weapons that you already mastered. Mm -hmm. You'd have to level up the gun fully in order to use that attachment, just the way it was. They decided to change it this way, and they have some attachments that will follow through almost like a mastery tree of weapons. So part of me looks at this and I'm like, this is really, really cool because they're separating shit by like receiver types, which is awesome. You change your yep. weapons based on receiver types, which is incredible. The, as I'm playing it, I don't know if I am digging the whole unlock or level this weapon to get this attachment elsewhere. If it was more front loaded. Mm hmm. I think I'd be okay. I think I'd feel better about it. And maybe I'll change my mind as I become, as I maybe I hit that midpoint. But right now, it doesn't feel good. Interesting. I, it doesn't feel good. I, I see where they're coming from, though. They want to encourage the use of other weapons. Yep. But now, now, now you just have people begrudgingly doing it just to get the attachment to then throw the gun away and never use it again. So is it like, is it like old destiny? Refresh my memory. You would have to level up the weapon to unlock all of its potential by using it. Yes. Was it using it or putting? No, it was using it. You it had to use it, it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like it, it, I get, like I said, I get what they were doing and I like aspects of it a lot. What I don't so like I want I want an angled foregrip for one of my guns. I, I want the angled foregrip. But to get the angled foregrip, I have to go and I have to level up some random fucking sniper for an angled yeah. foregrip on a sniper. Yeah. That that doesn't track at all, but continue, please. They want the angled foregrip on a sniper. That sniper is locked. I don't have access to it. So I then have to go and I have to level something else up in order to unlock that sniper rifle in order to level that sniper rifle up in order to get the angled foregrip on the M4 that I want. You see how that could feel kind of trash? It feels um, 
contrived for no reason is that the way best way to phrase it like it yeah. feels like it's just, you're just it's busy work busy work right it's it's i get locking guns behind levels that's i'm perfectly fine with that. that that's okay you're giving people something to strive for i don't like not only are you locking guns out behind levels but then you're locking attachments out behind locked guns behind levels yeah. you know what i mean i yeah just, I mean, I'll, I'll know it more intimately once I get into it, but yeah, I agree with you. As well yeah, it's just, uh, there's aspects of it I think are really great, and I think are cool, and I think are very, um, like, almost real world applicable, and then there's other aspects of it like this, where on paper it sounded cool, because once it's unlocked, man, what's good about it, before I get flamed, once it is unlocked, every weapon that can universally use that attachment you can use that attachment immediately without having any levels on it, on the gun. Right, right. So once I unlock that angled foregrip, I can then go into any weapon that, that I'm able to attach that to, and I can just go ahead and throw it on. So you're yeah. kind of building an inventory of attachments that you can use, which is cool. It just doesn't feel as good as I hoped it would feel. Do you think they is, is now is this a community consensus or is this just Mike's two cents? This is Mike's two cents. I, I the community prob. I try to stay away from the Call of Duty community. To be honest with you. <laughs> I think most people would agree with you. I that's a good I, idea. I try to stay away from the Call of Duty bro tubers. I find them obnoxious at best. And when they so like right now, a lot of them are complaining. Um, a lot of the complaints. Or you'll see videos right now like Modern Warfare 2 missing all of this. And it's they'll go through the list of everything that it's missing and they'll be like, there's no hardcore mode. They said that it would be released with the other game modes. Mm. So is it missing when they said that it was going to come out with everything else? I mean, they, they said it was going to come out with everything else unless I'm missing something, which I'm sure someone's going to tell me to fuck my own face. That's fine. Or, or or something else that I keep seeing them complain about. They're like, they said there's going to be this many ARs at launch, and there's only 10. And then they'll they'll be like, well, well, if you fucking glitch the menu in the campaign that was early released, <laughs> you would see there's a honey badger there, and now it's not. Glitch the menu. I'm like, w w how is that missing? How is that missing? They just didn't want to include it at the launch because, you know, nope. in two it's weeks, missing. in two weeks, season one comes out and like, how pissed are you going to be if season one has no weapons with it? Like, it's, it's missing. It's not here. Shut the fuck up there. I'll tell you this much for weapons at launch. It's way more than Battlefield 2042. Oof, Battlefield got off to a bad start. Tim said it was actually a lot of fun when he played it last week. I still have it installed. I booted it up. I do I, not have it installed. I, I, it, the amount of weapons are more than battle than 2042. Like, like I, I don't know what the complaint is. There's more than enough to do and level right now between the short time between now and season one. But to, it's, it feels disingenuous to be like, you could see it in the menu before and now it's not. That wasn't the official launch, motherfuckers. Like, what the hell? It, they're just... They're annoying. They're obnoxious at best. The bro tubers for COD are just... It's mostly Doom saying, the game is trash, this is shit, every Call of Duty is the Call of Duty that's gonna kill the franchise. It, it's, oh, it's so annoying. It's so annoying. I can't stand it. So I stay away. Fair. Um, but aside from the uh part leveling what is your overall feeling because everyone seems to really be enjoying it i love it dude the maps so here's the thing <clears throat> the maps feel way smaller for 6v6 which i like it's super fast paced very fast paced i i've seen a couple people complaining about um camping i haven't seen it as much or even if they are camping because it's so fast if i die to a camper it takes very little time for me to get back to where I was and I just hit him with a drill charge through a wall and it kills him. Got it. So, so it's, I haven't 
been encountering it as much. I'm really loving how fast it is. It feels great. The weapons feel great so far. I'm really I heard enjoying they, it. I heard they made steps with player movement to mitigate camping as well. Yeah, yeah the steps I feel like still aren't there yet um but they they did well, they do made that. changes to like crouching and jumping am i am i reading all that correct i've seen that they might have I, here's so what i don't <clears throat> the other thing i don't like is i don't like i don't like the way the mini map functions in conjunction with attachments so you can get a UAV super fast now. So you have view of the whole map and people that are on it, right? Mm -hmm. This is, so this is all kind of mushed into one. Like They're innovating for no other reason than to say it's new. I, the perk system's changed. Now you slowly level up your perks in a match. Remember how before you would just pick your loadout and that was your loadout of perks? And that's mm -hmm. what you had the whole game. Not anymore, dude. Now... You slowly level up to obtain your perks during a match. And it, it, so like you start with two basic ones, and then after a period of time, you get your third perk. And then after mm -hmm. a period of time beyond that, you get your ultimate perk, which is your fourth, right? And yep. then, so it's like half of the game, you don't have all of your perks. It's, it's like, it, that I strongly, strongly don't like, and I really hope that they change it. Just give me the perks that I choose for my loadout, period. Because yeah. everyone has UAVs up all the time. During a match, all you hear, enemy UAV, ally UAV, enemy UAV, nonstop. So you're always on the minimap. Even with a suppressor, you're on the minimap. It's, it's not even, it's just, it's not... It makes suppressors almost not even worth using unless you have ghost and it makes it, the constant you not having perks to battle the UAVs feels like trash. I don't like that. I, I just just give us our perks. Stop with the time shit. Just give us our perks. You have score streak kill streak variations. That's fine. That's enough. Just give us our perks. I don't want perk based. I don't want to obtain perks based on points. basically the thing i never liked about that too was like if you're bad at the game it just continues the steamrolling of you with with point-based perks does that make sense it so they've mitigated that like they've it's a very small window where someone who's really bad would be below someone who's better than them there's a smaller window but you're right there's still a period of time where Somebody who's really, really good at the game would have all their perks quicker than you, which then enables them to just continue stomping, right? right. Um, and then I guess the counter argument to that would be, well, there's SBMM, so the you should be in lobbies with people who are on par with your skill level. How do you feel about the SBMM? Because I know a lot of streamers are complaining about it, but as as you and I have said for years, streamers in SBMM. Um, I don't think it's fair. Does that make sense? Like, I don't think their opinion matters in that conversation because they're playing the game for how many hours a day? Correct. Yeah, no, I, you know, as opposed to you and me who work and then go home and play for like an hour or two. Um, I don't think they really should have a say in the matchmaking. I think there could be different types of matchmaking for folks like them and folks like you and me. That that's fine. But how, what's your overall feeling on that side of, of things? If my overall feeling, so I, if you were to give me an argument for either side, I could say, oh, I understand where you're coming from, right? Because mm -hmm. because if you're saying um, SBMM shouldn't exist, it should be connection based only. Um, SBMM shouldn't exist, and if they if I want to get sweaty, then just they should have a ranked play mode, and the ranked play mode is there. I'm like, okay, right. But you're, you're talking about a completely... Now, if you have a ranked play, play mode, you're talking about seasons. You're talking about, well, if I'm doing this, then I want rewards. Now, you're, you're starting to compound what this mode is. Now, it's a whole separate fucking game. It's a whole separate playlist. Oh, well, right. you achieve diamond, and you're going to get this calling card and this emblem, and you get this blue... They're going to start wanting shit, right? Um, I... 
see how you could separate the two and you could say this is for those who want to be sweaty and you can choose when to be sweaty and then you could choose to just get in here. When I see a streamer or a bro tuber cry and piss and moan about SBMM, all I personally hear is, is, uh, I want views. I can't get nukes anymore. It's so difficult. I have to lobby hop now. I want to stop on blueberries. This is dog shit. That's all. That's, that's all I hear. I just, I just don't care. Well, you know what it is? I just don't care about your fucking gaming experience. That's what it is. I don't care. You're a YouTuber and you want X, Y, and Z experience. Why are you any more entitled than anybody else? That's my, that's my point is. Why? So you, know, you, I remember so you can upload a video about first nuke on such and such map. I don't care. I remember back in the Destiny days, you know, people were like, there's no content. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then my friends would text me, people that were not into streaming or anything, and they'd be like, man, how do you get through this game? Like, I have two hours at night, and um, this is, this is, I, can't, I can't get as far as you and, and whatnot. And to see the disparity between the two groups saying, one was saying there's not enough content, and the other one saying I, there's too much content. You know, and then Bungie obviously went and sided with the the streamers, which I believe was a marketing move more than anything. Well, um, a lot of what Bungie did was marketing with streamers. Remember, they had the the fucking special people who got to go and. Yep. And I think part of the problem with that was you alienated the common person who only has a few hours to play. And that's why I think Destiny has become such a niche game um, where it has a very big core community but i don't you know i know all my friends who played it casually dropped off none of them play it anymore um and i don't play it anymore because it, it just didn't turn out i don't think the game that was sold to me originally was or even along the way was what we have now no um and i've tried to come back three times and i've nothing it doesn't stick i i i put destiny down a long time ago um shortly after destiny 2 really and yeah uh, I it's yeah it's just not made for it's just not for me and I think COD has a lower entry point with your ability to jump into multiplayer it is a very short story um, which we've heard I've heard nothing but good things about the story which is great because I love a good COD story um, but that's been the that's been the thing that I hear the most is um, you know about about destiny from the from the average player Right. I don't have time to raid. I don't have time to do this. Now, was it their goal to kind of capture that subset that they captured? Maybe. Maybe that was their goal all along. I don't. I don't. Like I said, I'm not going to pretend. Maybe the game just wasn't for us, and that's fine. Right. Like, we're we're cool with that. That's fine. I totally there's plenty. Fine. There's plenty else to play and move on to. Um. But yeah, they did the same thing, and I think you're always going to have that argument now in any shooter, competitive shooter like this, or where you know. It, it's not fair that I basically what you're saying is it's not fair that I have to always play against people who are my similar skill level. It's not fair. How how is it not fair? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we saw the reason I brought up Destiny is because we saw with PvP them go back and forth with CBMM and SBMM numerous mm -hmm. times. Yeah. Um. You know, and now they don't even I don't even think they tell you uh, I could be wrong. I haven't played Destiny forever, but um, it's just interesting to see it played out now in another game and the way it works i don't think anyone will ever get to the point with cod where they're like no i'm not i'm not gonna play it because the entry point is is too much or the matchmaking isn't what i want of course people will but overall it's just so easy to jump in that they can sustain that for for much you know, longer you know what's hilarious is is these these bro tubers for cod that will piss and moan right there is a cut there are a couple that i will watch their gameplay because they are genuinely amazing at the game they are just they're so good at the game they are also ones crying about this 
but I'm look I'm watching their gameplay and I'm like you are still stomping. Cool, you might die every third round. But you're stomping. So ultimately your complaint is you have to use meta meta weapons. Mhm. That like because really that's the only difference. Like you could be that good and use a trash weapon and still be that good against blueberries or you could be that good against other people who are also that good and you just have to use a meta weapon so again it comes down to you crying about content for your channel that's it that's the that's all it comes down to that's all it comes down to it comes down to what can i post what can i you know what's cool for my stream what can i get on my youtube and i i just i don't care Yes. And at the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to say is we don't if, listen to the streamers that complain about X, Y, and Z. No, if you're that good, people are watching you anyways because you're that good. Right. The streamers have a much different agenda than you do as the average Way consumer different. of X. Way. And this is not limited to COD. This is pretty much every single game. You know, you see. Why do you think you know who's a great example of someone who accepts the fact that they're a streamer and plays the game constantly, but it also might be the nature of the game they play is someone like Towley yeah. with WoW, because yeah. yeah. all Towley does is just make a new character, but it also might be WoW has the ability has more a, a, a larger ability to do something like that, where it's just like, all right, I've done everything I can on this character, so now I'm going to go do it on this one, right. as opposed to other games which don't really have that opportunity, so it might be a bad equivalency there right i just i just i don't i i I guess i'm just i'm just so tired of hearing people cry about it yep and then and then i I love i love i absolutely love the passive aggressive insults not even passive aggressive it's just an insult they just like to insult everyone else who just doesn't who don't care or who enjoy it most people are like oh if you had fun in mw19 it's because you sucked at the game if you liked it it's because you were bad you had a good experience you're a shitter i just i don't understand that's that's uh, that's their immediate comeback. Well, if you're having fun, it's because you suck at the game and you're also playing against people who suck. Okay. Okay, dude. Cool. Cool. If I'm a if I'm a 1KD player and I'm playing against other 1KD players, how is my experience any different from yours? So I had a point and it fell out of my head. So keep Sorry. going. I had no, a good it's one. Just, it doesn't matter if you're KD of five and you're playing against oh. other KDs of five. I that, know what I wanted to say. Like COD to me is a perfect example of the idea of that a game can't just be fun. No. And that is what always turns me off every time I get it and try and play in multiplayer is I get overwhelmed by the fact that I'm not really good at shooters, but I do want to play games with my friends you know playing like for instance playing Fortnite with tim encouraged me to play the entire last season of Fortnite, and i was literally three stars short of getting my vader skin which is still a sore subject but that's my fault not Fortnite's. and you just had fun uh, and i just had fun and you know all of a sudden i started racking up all these victory royales i started getting pretty decent at the game just because i was casually learning the ins and outs and i feel like the entry point to cod because the last COD I played, I think, was whatever was before Vanguard. I think the last COD you played was 19 with me, wasn't it? Probably 19 with you, because the last story I played before that was World War II. You um, definitely played 19. I know you had 19. Yeah, I think I got a code for it. Um, I, think, I believe we played together when it first launched, and that was it. Yeah, because I used to play on PlayStation 4 with Brian and Pete back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had a I used to have a blast playing multiplayer, but then we got into Battlefield. Battlefield was like it. Battlefield Battlefield sh- was great for me because I didn't have to be good at shooting. We would play control. And you're you're still contributing. Oh my god, dude. I was the best helicopter pilot on the server. Picking dude. people up, dropping them into into control points, you know, getting out of it was just it was a blast. It was a blast. Old, and that's the vibe I want. Well, Battlefield? I don't think I mean that's that's top tier. Oh, yeah, you'll never. That's one of those moments in gaming like World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King, or. You'll um, never recapture. 
no, I will launch the Star Wars The Old Republic. You just, you can't get it back. You won't ever get it. You can chase it all you want, but look for the new thing because you're not going to get that back. Nope. Um, and that was Battlefield <laughs> 4 for me. I I just, I don't, uh, look, COD's not dying. It's not dying. No, not, it, not even it, close. It's not, it's not dying. They had some stumbles, you know what I mean? Infinite Warfare, shit like that. Um. Infinite Warfare was bad for multiplayer. That was one of the best stories they ever wrote or for advanced, single player was campaign. It advanced Warfare, whatever the fuck it was. The one with Jon Snow. It was like, you know, I don't like futuristic COD at all. I don't like, I like my modern shooters, right? I like three, Battlefield 3, I like Battlefield 4, I like Call MW9. I like the Modern Warfare series. Um, that's what I like, right? I, I can relate to what I'm using in the game. I'm not big on old era weaponry i'm not big on i'm just i just it just doesn't it just doesn't tickle my fancy you know what i mean um so modern if you say it's a modern shooter i'm in i'm there sign me up i want it so games like 19 and now uh 22 i'm gonna enjoy the shit out of it just because of what i get to use in game and this the whole sbmm argument i just it just faults it it it, you're you're screaming into the void as far as i'm concerned i just if you i I get the argument if i wanted to be sweaty then just put a ranked playlist in okay okay that's fair okay but there isn't a ranked playlist so it is what it is (laughs) it is what it is you know what i mean that's it is what it is. I, I, I mean, if you want to go stomp somebody else, play a different game, I guess. I don't... But you won't, because it's Call of Duty. So, shut the fuck up. Uh, I, you, know what, you know what I really missed? Um, I love Ghost Recon games. Even the single-player versions of the last two are, are fun for me. Here, here is my thing. My peak of multiplayer was Battlefield 4. Prior to that, it was Ghost Recon 4v4. But do you remember the pace of those? Yes. Set up. Mm -hmm. Secure your perimeter. Mm -hmm. Depending on if you're a defender attack too, depending on what game mode you're playing. And then, you know, sit and wait. Yeah. That was how I like to play multiplayer PvP. Because it was tactical. It felt real. It was not run and gun, which I feel like every single game now. Rainbow Six... Siege. I was just yeah. Siege but it's is still that little very bit, fast. It it's is still you have very fast. Time. Yep. You know Ghost what? Ghost Recon like was wait, and I remember you could like sniper fire because you were full ghillie suit. They literally couldn't see you, <laughs> especially because it was pixelated back then, more so than it is now. Fire you know sniper I, around. That's why you play on low, low low settings, bro. Real gamers play on low settings. Oh my god, I hate that idea. Um, <laughs> fire sniper around and like you would literally have to use you, this is why people played with headphones back in the day i mean they still do now for the same reason but you'd have to figure out where you heard it come from mm-hmm. especially if it missed but nothing was better than like you're just waiting waiting and all of a sudden your buddy like stands up to take a and look poof. and oh, don't don't and you're out you're out of that match you're out and it's 3v4 from that point on that was how i liked my pvp back in the day you know what? You know what I like in this whole SBMM CBMM issue too. Controller v mouse and keyboard. I'm using a controller. I don't give a shit. No, so, but th- this is what I like in it too, because and I use mouse and keyboard, right? So what? What do most M and K players cry about? Aim assist. Yes. Guess what? It's there. I, I like. I'm not going to limit the people I play with or the players I play against by, you know, opting out of crossplay. Even though way, you know, way back I was so sick and tired of everyone just shitting on titles that weren't crossplay. And I would stand by that. I don't fucking care if it doesn't have crossplay. I don't care. I like yeah. that it does. It broadens, but not every game has to have it. it, it and I would still I still agree with that sentiment that I had way back. Um The game has it, it, it. It's there. So to cry about controller players having aim assist, what? Why? 
But it guess what? It's not going to change. Yep. It's not going to change. So I'm going to sit there and I'm going to, which I don't personally care. But if, if somebody who does could sit there and bitch about controllers being in their lobby, every lobby I'm in, I'll, there's maybe four keyboard players. Maybe yep. the rest, the rest of the lobby is controllers. So it's like, I liken the argument to keyboard players who whine about controller players as top tier PVPers complain about SBMM. I just. Shut up. <laughs> That's my feelings about COD. I mean, you're you're not. You, you, I think everything you said is validated. I think it comes from a place of experience. I think it comes from a place of maturity and knowledge. Um, you know, again, I'm not taking personal shots at streamers, but I do think to an extent their word is should be taken with a grain of salt when they're giving their opinion on a game, because the average person does not have forty to sixty hours a week to play video games. If you, as a dev, are taking into consideration a streamer's um, opinion as to how your game moves forward and that opinion doesn't benefit the majority of your player base that is a problem right like if you're making changes to solely improve the game for that 1% Versus the ninety nine percent that are playing, like I, I, I agree. Think, I, I agree. I, there is an when I when piggybacking on what you said, I think it's a it's they think it's a marketing play. If, if I can market they, this and yeah. make them happy, they'll make the three thousand people that watch them happy. And I that might work for like a week. It depends on what it is. That's what I'm saying. So if a, if a, if a content creator comes in and says, "Listen, this feels bad for the player base." This feel I don't like this X Y and Z, and it's something that genuinely impacts the player base. Then you have positive marketing there by that streamer saying, "Hey, listen, they listened to us, they changed it, they fixed it, and it's now it's better." Right? Versus, um, so let's take let's take a game that I Dead by Daylight, right? And I'm a killer main, and if I sit there and I say and 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 I play a specific killer and I say they're too weak they this and that i i this i did this this one killer needs to be stronger right and they do that well now every other killer is would could, would be sub to that right let's just let's just say everyone's even just for argument's sake there's even uh, all the killers are even across the board right but now every player who plays survivor has that much shittier of a time so you only benefited the people who play the killer I play and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everyone else's killer is sub part of that killer now. And everyone who plays survivor has a worse time for it. But thank God you listen to me. Right. Yep. So it's like, uh, no, if you're doing something that benefits the majority, you have a, you have a marketing, a positive marketing opportunity. If you are just appeasing the few streamers who cry about something, because it's what they want for themselves. It's a personal gain. That's a miss. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree. I, I, I think you're right on the money. Uh, it's, it's. I think Bungie did that a lot early on. A lot, a lot, a lot. I don't even think they did it early on. I think they actually did it later. I think like towards the end of Destiny 1 into Destiny 2. Well, um, you remember all the, all the PvP complaints that came in. Oh, yeah. I mean. I mean, oh, yeah. like a flood of PvP complaints. I love Destiny PvP in, in the original one. I loved it. Trials was awesome. That was a great oh, man, time. You used, to do, uh, you used to do jellies. Jellies was awesome. You gotta incredible. tell people what jellies is so because a lot of people don't know us from back then. Oh, man. Way back in the day, I don't know anyone who played original Destiny. There was a gun, uh, the Necrochasm, and it would shoot green bolts. It, but it it was like a green mist that would trail it, and it looked like Jello, like Jello shots coming out. Like duh, 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 duh. it was not a good gun. Was it? Was it a raid exotic? Didn't it turn into another gun? Yeah, you had to you had to get a like a common gun, I think it was, and a then, husk something husk, yeah, and husk, that became necro necrochasm, yeah. right? 
what, yeah, there was a was. maybe maybe a few stages to it, and then it eventually became an exotic. Um, so we started doing I, I organized runs where we would get gather parties together, and we'd have a full party that would come in, and the only gun you could use was the Necrochasm. And we would just roll through and we would just you'd see all all of us, all of us gathered up and we'd be running around like a pack. And anytime we found somebody, it was just a sea of green, just <laughs> nailed with just green jello. It was awesome. And you roll around and you would scream, you know, you got jellied. I it remember. Was that was, yeah, that was like the thing for Mike's channel back in the day. That was so much fun, dude. I was jelly. You and uh, Shane, not Shane, Rare Drop Shane. It hates you, Shane. Hates you, Shane. We run around doing jellies, man. I got to text him. I only see him once a year now. I know. Shane is good people. Man, so many so many people that I miss from the streaming days that I got I got along so well with that don't stream and then you drop off because they stopped streaming. Because I mean, back when we started, it was the like we were we were prime time for the dream. Like, I'm, this could be my career. So the I was like, hey, if I can make money off of it, like if I if I could supplement, have a supplemental income and do this, that's awesome. But I was like, there's no way there's no way I was going to drop out of what I was doing with all the benefits and everything that I got. Yeah. So I was like, ah, if we get big, cool. If we don't. Whatever. And it turned into the, turned into this. Yep. Yeah, it's it's pretty it was a pretty wild uh, journey. I originally I was the same thing with supplemental income. You know, we started the WRS media thing. We tried to really um expand our horizons uh and then I moved and that's when things took off cuz I was, you know, I started the jam and did all that stuff and then GCX and whatnot and that's why I'm sitting at this desk. So, it worked out in the end. It just not yeah. the way I would have thought it would have, but is what it is but yeah it it's a different out. world now it all panned out it's a, it's a different world now though you know you don't have to well, grind so, that, so that's what i think about now what i think about now is <clears throat> if you were still doing it in that with in that headspace today what it would be like i don't think that headspace works i've told people this numerous times it's just uh now to first of all your competition to get noticed is infinitely uh, higher um, the competition not your ability to get noticed that's much lower um, the uh, ingenuity that's out there now and the things people are doing with the technology is pretty insane uh, and that's a good thing you know um, most people back in the day it was a stream we had some innovative folks who came along you know Dr. Disrespect Future Man all these folks that had gimmicks um, Streamer House was another one that had a cool gimmick um, and some of them, you know, they all still exist. I'm not saying they're gone. Uh, but I just think the idea that you can flick on a camera, you know, sit down after work, hang out with a bunch of people and, you know, play some video games. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, um, it's, not, it's not the same mentality as it was. Cause we used to do Jackbox, uh, stuff. Remember that? And we, we'd have, yep. uh, interact I mean, that's what it was it was just sitting down and we can, chilling and playing the we game can together still do that and we will i i enjoy doing that i i you know i one thing that i started doing content again mostly for rare drop but is that i really do enjoy the time that i get to do it like i really enjoy playing D D. it's one of my favorite things to do i enjoy um you know playing video games with other people i played solo for so many years that now I would like to play games with friends again. Um, and streaming affords you the opportunity to inter interact. I'm loving the watch parties. We're going through Invincible now. What a wild show, by the way. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's just, um, it's it's nice to interact with people and have that connection. But I'm not sitting, in, in fact, I'll give you inside baseball. Um, we look at, at content creation as marketing opportunities at Rare Drop. Right. You know, I'm going to create content and tell you about the products or the projects that we're working on. That's how we look at it. We don't look at it as a revenue stream. I know that sounds crazy and it is a revenue stream, but the numbers on the revenue stream versus, you know, what we can do with the other stuff that we're selling. It, it, they're just the data supports us doing it this way. Now I know someone's going to be like, what about critical role? Yeah. They they produce an entertainment property that sells better than anything else on Twitch. 
that's what Critical Role did. That is not what I'm trying to do. If I set out to today, which we tried this in 2021, to be honest, we had all the shows on the network and we, we tried all of the stuff. And the reason I cut it was because it was just it was a money bleed. It wasn't worth it anymore. Right. Um, it was nothing against the people that were creating content with us. But we tried so many different projects in 2021 um, that ended up just stuck to the wall. Yeah, it just ended up bleeding. And we got stuff out of it. We got data. We got people. We got contractors. We got all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, it comes down to what's working, what's not. Um, you know, we had shows we pitched to people. They would do it for a while and they would lose interest. So um, it's a different world when it comes to this day and age. You know, obviously, multi-streaming is is... Something we tried very early on. I remember we used to stream at one point before we were partnered, before I was partnered. We would stream to the worst radio show, Twitch channel, the worst radio show. Um, oh, yeah. You remember that? Stream.me we used to stream to. Yes. Hitbox. I about that. We used to stream to Hitbox. Yep. Um, and the whole goal was we would run reruns of the podcast episodes and was trying to get traction. Um, to get people to where we wanted them, which was either Patreon at the time or our website, whatever it may be, um, or to get you to listen to the podcast. It had nothing to do with how many people were watching at any given moment. We didn't give a shit about CCV. We gave a shit about you clicking the button and subscribing to the podcast. Right. So, you know, as businesses, because this is a lot of what Rare Drops businesses, as nonprofits and, and for-profit companies continue to enter the space, continue to do work in the space, keep in mind that it's not always about your viewer count. Keep in mind it's about impressions a lot of the time and keep in mind it's about getting people to go somewhere else. And that is at the same time, that's also what the platforms are trying to prevent you from doing. <laughs> so there's a constant battle there. I'm, I'm digressing, but yeah, it's just changed so much. So, you know, again, don't go into it. Mike's Headspace is the best version of it where it's like, hey, if I can make a little money off of this and I'm having fun, then I may as well do this versus you know the people that are like i'm all in full time i'm doing it good luck now if you're if you're unemployed or you lost your job or you got laid off i have no problem with you taking the risk you know i know people that got laid off a few weeks ago that are streaming full time right now I, and it's sad because i know more than one and that's what makes me upset about the economy mm -hmm. and everything that's going on right now right that are streaming full time while they look for other work there's nothing, and I repeat, nothing wrong with that. That is fine. In, in fact, that's probably the smartest way to do it is, you know, this will get me, this will get something through the door while I'm transitioning to whatever my next step is in my career. Yeah. That I got respect for. It's the people that are like, I'm going to quit my job. You know, I got a wife and two kids. My wife's going to support the family while I pursue my dream of streaming. Now, did that work for some people? Yes, it did. Did it work for most people? No, it didn't. Um, so, I mean, and again, if your wife is making quarter million a year, well, who cares what you do then? <laughs> yeah, go for it. You know, and I'm using wife in the context of a, of a heterosexual male, female relationship. Cause that's what I'm comparing it to my own life. Obviously you could be a woman and be married. You could be non-binary, whatever it may be, whatever the example is, whatever the situation is, it doesn't matter. Um, the spouse, significant other, if they're making a quarter million dollars and you are, you know, wanting to take the chance and you're both in alignment, because that's another big one. I've said it before on this podcast. If you're not in alignment with your significant other on this, get fucked. Look at Tom Brady. Ah, <laughs> he has nothing to do with streaming. Ring. Has nothing to do. Oh, that, but he'll be lucky if he makes the playoff. Well, he made, he made, no, no, no. <laughs> lucky bastards in the worst division in the NFL right now. If I were you want me. Me and you are like sitting there going like, OK, we all had to be good this season in the NFC East. All of us, everyone, everyone. decided this was everyone. the year we were going to all be good. Yep. Did the Eagles win this week or were they off? We won. Steelers. So they're, they're eight. No, or seven. Oh, no, no, no. Eight. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. no, no, no. Wait, what week is it? We played the Steelers, right? Week eight. Because they were undefeated. I'm pulling up the schedule now. That's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, they beat the Steelers 35-13. Yeah. Yes. We spanked the Steelers. Spanked them. So you're 8-0. No. Yeah, 8-0. No. Let's go, halfway baby. To, Let's go, half, baby. Almost halfway to perfection. Let's go. Yeah, but you got the Cowgirls it, it, and the uh, Giants breathing down your neck. So 
Um, I see. I could see us losing to the Giants, and against Dallas, we normally split. So we got some L's coming. I think. I think. But um, actually, we know what, what's our split against you guys. I don't think we played yet this year. No, I mean in, in historically. Oh, Giants, Eagles, historic record. Um, wow, there's a page dedicated to the Giants Eagles rivalry. Uh, it is ninety eighty eight and two in favor of the Eagles. Wow, that's close. That's I, I, it's normally a split, and it's the same thing for I, I believe the Cowboys. I can look that up while I'm doing this. Has a normal split as well. It is. Oh, that's Giants. I want Eagles. Uh, it is. Cowboys Eagles rivalry. 72 55 in favor of the Cowboys. That's yeah. way bigger than the Giants one. So I, I can see us losing to Dallas and I can see us losing to you. I mean, the Giants were on fire and then they just lost to Geno Smith and the Seahawks. So. <laughs> but given the historical splits, there's a high likelihood we 50-50 the season. And, we'll the way, and the way you guys are playing, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it, yeah. Because we had a couple games, man, that skin of the team. Like, we, we only beat the Cowboys last game 17-26. So... They come back in this late December and, you know, fl- flip the script on us. We haven't played you guys at all this season yet. When did we play you? December 11th. It's, yeah. And then we turn right around to January, early January. Holy shit, we got two close games together. Giants-Cowboys is Thanksgiving this year. Excited oh, about sh- that one. Fuck the Cowboys. All right, before we get out of here, I have a question for this episode. Mm. What is the weirdest thing you have seen in someone else's house? In someone else's house? In someone else's house. The I can go first if you want. Yeah, hit me with it. So we had this friend back in the day. I'm not going to say his name. Fast forward to the end of the story. Uh, it turns out. So, OK, back in the day, he was like he started out as like a crust punk. Remember crust punks? What did they wear? Like, you know, like uh, very dirty punk rock kids that listen to like the vandals and the exploited and stuff oh, like we, that. We, we always just called him punk. Punk got conflated with with like pop punk Blink One Eighty Two era, so they called them we crust called, punks. We and they didn't bub- shower or anything. We called them bubblegum punk. <laughs> we yeah, them, fair, fair, yeah, fair. We called them bubblegum. So with he started out as that, and then he transitioned into black metal. Okay, all right. Fast forward, I forget who ran into him, or maybe somebody figured this out. I can't remember. He, I believe, he's in prison. Awesome track. Okay. I don't know if it was for murder or for like battery and assault, but he Jeez. ended up being getting into like white nationalist from the black metal, which is a pretty common transition. I hate to say. Um, so he got into white nationalism and, you know, went full Nazi and either killed somebody or beat somebody up. I don't remember the details in there. Okay. So he, I believe he's in prison now. So that's important here. Anyway. So we used to go to his house and he we never saw his father ever. Not once. Never. I don't I've never met his father, but his, he lived with his parents. There was a door in his house that nobody was allowed to go into. And nobody like if you asked about it, they would be like, it's 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 just storage. It's nothing like really dismissive and really to this day. If you got in a chat right now and asked Pete, he would tell you about the room no one could ever go in there. Um, and it was part of it. Like, we know it was a room. It was a bedroom. It was something because of the way the house was structured. But nobody, I repeat, nobody was allowed in this room ever. Okay. Not once. And we never saw the father. Not once. 
So to this day, I am curious about the situation with the father and that room. I think about it every so often. I'm like, man, I don't want to say his name, but man, what the hell was in that room? And where the hell was his dad? Because it'd be like two o'clock in the afternoon. His dad did not work nights on a Saturday and be like, oh, my dad's sleeping. Okay. What Never the saw the man. Never no saw Saratu. the man. I don't know, but that secret room. <laughs> uh, you just sold me. No Sparatu. <laughs> don't go in there. Even the mother would be like, nobody goes in there. Stuff like that. The sister, same thing. Um, okay. But yeah, to this day, I have no idea what happened in there or what went on with the father. Uh, see, I've I've seen a lot of weird, fucked up shit in houses. So I'm trying to decide, like, wh- like as far as what... Uh, you should keep it interesting and or amusing rather than some of the other stuff you've seen. So steer away from dark shit. Try to if you can. It could be somewhat <laughs> dark, but interesting and or amusing would probably be suited. I pulled this one out of the pack and I was like, oh, Mike's going to love this question. He's going to have a well, litany of things to choose from. I, yeah, that's what I'm trying. And what like what constitutes to we, what constitutes that's up to you. weird to me anymore? You can make that call. There's got to be been, something. There's plenty. A, I'm I'm debating whether or not it's appropriate to say here. B, I mean, you could you could use codes to say it if it's inappropriate. Well, it's like um, it, it it could go any any which way. It's up to, to be you, honest though. with you. Weird, weird. Okay. What's been the weirdest? Weird is is good. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to stick with weird. Like, why would this, why would this be in here? Right. Right. Like, did you, yeah. Did you like open up the front door and there was like an eight foot Frankenstein statue and it was nude with its dong out, like stuff like that. We're going to go with weird. Okay. Weird's good. When I was a kid, we lived in a, there was four of us plus uh, my mom and my dad. And uh, we lived in the little, little split level house and down the road from us was uh, it's big. I remember it was big brown house. The whole yard backyard was fenced in, but it was privacy fence going mm-hmm. all the way around. Couldn't see back there. I, to this day, I don't know why the fuck I was inside of this house. No idea. No idea. But ha- like what? conversations occurred for me as a little kid walking into this person's house no idea Mm -hmm. but we walked in and when we walked in we saw that every square inch of the floor of this house was covered in newspaper and what yes and it smelled rank they have animals they had two okay that's even weirder two And I'm not talking about teacup. I'm talking massive hogs. Oh, 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 okay. They had two two hogs that lived inside their house with them like a dog would. Oh, that's stinky. So these things would shit and piss all over the place. So they would put newspaper down to just wipe it up. Like, at some point, I understand they probably love these hogs. Don't get me wrong. Live outside. Yeah, it's a pig. because it's like, a pig. you have a floor under there. Don't you want to enjoy a the floor, floor you have? I remember it being a wood floor. So, you know, that's wood floor too. shit. Yeah, because, no, you know, dude, the newspaper is not absorbing all of that. They were huge. And maybe I'm just remembering them as massive because I was so little. And again, why I was inside these people's house. I don't know. I have no. My parents weren't with me. I have no idea why I was there. Different time, I guess. But they were two fat, waddling fucking pigs living in their house. It smelled like a pig pen, literally. How do you go to sleep Break. in that? Brings on new meaning to your mom being like, "This place is a pig pen," right? No, but how do you go to sleep like? Two big pigs living in your house, like just taking a shit at the end of your bed. 
Some people are okay with that. You ever I watch guess. Hoarders? I well, yeah. I see, and I've seen shit like that. I know you have, but it's like uh, I don't know. That was probably the weirdest. Not like disgusting, but well, it was disgusting. But I've seen more disgusting stuff than that. But that was probably the weirdest, one of the weirdest things I've seen inside good, someone's house. Just like willingly letting them live there. You want a good laugh? Next time you're down here, tell me to put hoarders on with Danielle in the room. Okay. The anxiety that comes over that woman when she watches hoarders <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> amazing. Uh. It's painful because like living in that scenario is probably one of her deepest fears. Um, And, you know, it's it, hoarders is not I'm messy. Hoarders is I have a mental, you know, mental health problem. Yeah. Of, of varying Absolute. degrees. And yeah. that's why my house is like this. And I feel bad for those people. I really do. It's not, you know, but it's intriguing. That's why the show exists. But I do feel bad for those people, but my wife just can't, she can't handle that show because she loves clean. She loves neat. Um, so it's very, it's very interesting to uh, watch hoarders with her. It's, it's a good time. <gasps> anyway, <gasps> thank you for listening to episode 45 of the old fashioned podcast. As always, you can follow us at old fashioned podcast or old fashioned pod on Twitter. Uh, we're on Facebook as well. Uh, and uh, that's if you want to say hi to me or Mike, that's the best place to do it. If you want to say hi to me, it's K Magic One Hundred One on Instagram, Kevin Exhibition on Twitter. Um, and uh, make sure you rate, review, subscribe. Uh, it really helps out the yeah. show. We just switched to a new provider, so we might have lost some reviews along the way. But yeah, um, and the preferred listening platform, I would say, at this point is is uh, Spotify. So if you're out there, and you're trying to choose spotify is the place where we would love for you to listen it would help us out the most so uh but thank you for listening i hope you have a fantastic week hopefully clintus is back next week he had a work thing come up so uh, i miss him yeah and then in two weeks i just confirmed this today mike is not going to be on that episode sorry mike damn because we're doing it live in the studio my buddy grant who's the bassist in under oath will be joining me in the rare job studio here in tampa to and hang I miss out it, and talk you about fuck talk about tour i mean you can fly down if you want talk about touring and all sorts of uh nonsense and shenanigans so we'll do that and you know he's a big gamer too so we'll talk about uh uh, games he was actually he saw me playing fortnite a few months ago and he was like oh we're playing fortnite now that you know no one's playing it and i was like no (laughs) i'm just enjoying it and then uh he's like why don't you you play the boat why don't you be put on your big boy pants and play apex with me i'm like i'm not playing apex i don't like that game he's like oh it's too fast for him shut up grant um (laughs) So, uh, yeah, two weeks we'll have uh, Grant live in the studio. Uh, Well, we won't be live, but I'll be live with him uh, for Old Fashioned. So uh, thank you again so much. Rate, review, subscribe, do all the things, follow, and uh, we will see you soon for episode 46 of the Old Fashioned Podcast. Have a great one.